So, for this one now, we're gonna go for some defensive stuff for the bottom. That last one we did was kind of a defensive thing for the bottom as well, obviously. But now actually we're going for offense from the defensive position, which is this bottom position. So we're gonna go for a rolling arm bar. I like this one for um, in the gi, especially, maybe even more so than no gi, just because there's uh, the friction actually plays a role to really help keep a good grip of their arm. Uh, but it's good no gi as well, and it's really good as kind of a, a, a one-two combo or plan A, plan B combo with the hip height and sit-up that we, were, we are gonna do also. So from here, he's got my head and, and he has my arm, so this is just a, a normal front headlock position. What I'm gonna do is the side of the arm that he has, I'm gonna go hooking over his arm, over his elbow on his arm. While I do that, I'm also grabbing that wrist. So I'm grabbing with my free arm, I'm grabbing his wrist, and then I'm coming around and I'm grabbing his bicep. I'm gonna plant my foot and roll up to my side right here. I took away his base and then I drive him onto that side. And notice I have a big squeeze above his elbow in relation to his body here. If you need to, you can come around to this side and see a little bit better. Um, I wanna keep this grip, I just rolled him onto his side. Now this hand that was grabbing his wrist here is just gonna pommel to a palm out grip on the wrist. And now, he's gonna have a little bit of, you know, gripping his hands together or something like that, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna get a double wrist grip of my own, pin my elbow to the ground if it's not already there. And now wherever his, his thumb is pointing, I push his arm in the opposite direction of that. Curl your wrist as well to get the finish right here. Make sure you're not below his elbow. It's not gonna work. I have to snap his, uh, his lower arm bones essentially right here to finish, whereas I can attack the joint at the elbow if I'm above the elbow. And that's very easy to do. You just make sure you get above his elbow from the original position, roll onto the side, and a uh, pretty sneaky little arm lock that a lot of people um, on top here are not expecting. So I get the wrist above the elbow and drive into him here. I've got a lot of weight on his left shoulder, so if the um, bottom guy, if you think the bottom guy would just escape, he can try to roll, roll out. And obviously if I try to stay here for like five minutes, he'll probably eventually get out. But I'm not hanging out here for too long. I'm coming to this position, double wrist, Mess around with where you're grabbing on his forearm. On his wrist, you wanna basically grab at the wrist. You don't wanna to go too low on the, on the arm. But on your arm, depending on how long their arm is, you may grab on the forearm, you may grab closer to your wrist. It's gonna depend on how long his arm is. If, as long as arm, if his arm is longer, you're gonna grab closer to your elbow, and that's totally fine. So right here, curl both wrists. Don't have weak wrists. It's gonna be very hard for me to finish if both my wrists are extended and weak. Curl your wrists, and now it's very easy to get a tap. Notice I have a lot of weight on his shoulder the whole time, and that's to keep him in place. Let me show him Hector as well. So, we're starting from the bottom, and he's got, of course, he switches this up on me, so um, we're gonna come here. I grab the wrist, I grab a round, and I roll to this side. Okay, so right here, I've got a big grip on his bicep, on his upper arm here. Um, I was showing this on Tuesday, and uh, Jack was saying that his arm just went to sleep as I was demonstrating this because I had a strong grip on this, on this uh, bicep right here. I can also bring my hips off the ground to put more pressure onto his shoulder, so it kind of depends on how big or how squirrely they are. I might bring my hips off the ground just a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It just shifts a lot of my weight even more of my weight onto his shoulder. Now from here, I don't wanna just hang out and let him do whatever he wants with his arms because he can actually end up getting a darts choke if I just hang out and not do anything with this hand. That's why I grab this wrist initially and that's why I immediately pum uh, pummel to a palm out grip on his wrist. Now if he tries to get a darts choke or anything like that, even if he has super long arms, uh, it's not gonna happen. I come to a double wrist grip and now see his thumb is pointing that way, I'm gonna push directly against that. Curl your wrist get the finish right here. It doesn't take a ton of strength. This is a move that maybe takes a tiny bit more strength live than, um, than some of the other moves like the guillotine and, and a lot of the other moves that we've done. But still, it's not like you have to be way stronger than your opponent or anything like that to pull this one off. Here, palm away. Oh, right here, double palm down. Curl those wrists. I'm on his shoulder. My elbow also on the mat. People on Tuesday, I'm trying to finish it like this. And it gets a little crazy. First you get a little off balance, plus it's now an arm wrestling match, kind of. Use your elbow as a fulcrum there to then bend his arm over and finish. Go nice and easy on the finish on this one. Um, it's, a, it's a little easier finish 
if you're doing it right, then uh, then it looks. It's pretty easy to take that arm uh, home from there. Any questions? Let's do it. One, two. Bottom gap.